Salt has been a, considered a holy grail nutrient for reducing cardiovascular disease in populations over the last 40 years. And the central hypothesis for this approach is that uh, salt increases uh, blood pressure. And we know that high blood pressure is a major risk factor for uh, having a heart attack or a stroke. So therefore, if we reduce salt intake in the population, we'll also reduce the amount of heart attacks and strokes as well. But is this supported by actual data or is it in large part conjecture? Well, that's the focus of my talk today. Now, firstly, uh, what are the current recommendations? Well, the WHO and the AHA uh, recommend that people consume anywhere between less than two to 2.4 grams of sodium per day or five to six grams of table salt per day, which is equivalent to approximately one teaspoon of table salt. And for high-risk individuals to consume even lower amounts, less than 1.5 grams per day of sodium or 3.8 grams of salt or 0.7 teaspoons of table salt per day. That's a very low amount of salt, very difficult for most people to sustain in the long term. Uh, and, uh, and so this would involve largely an overhaul of the food supply. Now, achieving these targets requires substantial change to the diet in most people. And so the current approach is a population-wide approach with public health policy and to get the entire population distribution of sodium shifted down toward the lower end from an average of 3.5 to 4 grams per day in Western populations, including the United States, down to an interim goal of 2.3 grams per day, and then eventually get it down to 1.5 grams per day, a, a major shift in the entire population. Now, is this 35 to 65 percent reduction in sodium in millions of people um, necessary, safe, and feasible? So the crux of the argument is that the blood pressure lowering effect of a reduction in sodium to low levels will reduce cardiovascular disease. Is this supported by the evidence? Well, first we'll look at the data on sodium and blood pressure, first starting off with the observational data. By far the most widely cited study is the InterSalt study published in 1988 in the British Medical Journal. And so this was a large uh, cross-sectional study. It was a global study in over 10,000 people in 52 centers worldwide. And what they found in InterSalt is that there's a rather uh, modest relationship between sodium and blood pressure, about a one millimeter mercury increase in systolic pressure per gram increase in sodium. Very, rather modest relationship. Now, in the same issue of the British Medical Journal in which InterSalt was published, the Scottish Heart Study was published, an equally well-conducted study. And in that study, they found no relationship between sodium and blood pressure in free-living in, uh, populations. But over the years, it's been the InterSalt study that has been widely quoted in the literature, while the Scottish Heart Study has been largely ignored. And then uh, recently, this is uh, data from uh, a uh, well-regarded study, the Framingham Offspring Study. Uh, this data presented at the exper experimental biology meeting last year. And what they found was that um, the people that were consuming lower amounts of sodium, shown in the blue line there, less than two and a half uh, grams per day, had higher blood pressure than people with moderate or higher levels of sodium. So it goes in the opposite direction. Again, this is a free-living population of generally healthy adults. So uh, you could see that generally in, in free-living populations, the, the relationship between sodium and blood pressure is not as clear-cut as we previously thought. 